You got beef with Beyond Beef? Well, let's break down the ingredients and see if the beef that you have with Beyond Beef is actual real beef or if it's Beyond Beef beef with Beyond Beef. Does that make sense? Anyhow, we're going to break down all the ingredients. We're going to break down if it truly is something that's better than beef and ultimately if the ingredients that are in it are doing you more harm than good. Now you might be looking at me and you might say, well this guy is in shape, he's got muscle, so of course he's going to say that regular beef is better. But if you've watched my videos before, you know that I'm a big proponent of still getting protein from plant-based sources. I'm not just a heavy meat eater. I look at it from a whole big picture and take a well-rounded approach. So this honestly is an unbiased video, but I did have to break down the ingredients as honestly as I possibly could. You are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel with new videos on Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Also, want to make sure that you go ahead and you hit that red subscribe button, then hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications and know whenever I post a video. I also want to make sure you check out Yujito Matcha. They're down in the description below, so after you watch this video, you're going to want to check them out. They're literally the world's leading matcha, ceremonial grade matcha that's perfect for keto, perfect for fasting, perfect for any kind of intermittent fasting lifestyle or whatever it is that you're doing, low carb lifestyle. The fact is matcha is not all created equal. So there's special discounts on their single serve matcha packets so that you can just drink matcha on the go super easily that tastes good, has a little bit of a sweet flavor or you can try any of their other matcha. So I highly recommend that you check them out, special discount down below after you watch this video. All right, let's go ahead and let's break down these ingredients. The first one that I do have to address is the big glaring elephant in the room, and that's canola oil. A major constituent of Beyond Beef is canola oil. This is one of the biggest beefs that I have with Beyond Beef. Canola oil in general goes rancid super easily, and I don't just mean that it goes rank in your fridge or rank in your pantry. Okay, I mean it goes rank in your body. You see, canola oil is derived from rapeseed. Rapeseed by itself is already a very toxic seed. It's not even safe for human consumption but it's easy to harvest and it's easy to grow. So what they do is they take rapeseed and then they go ahead and they extract the oil from it. Well, of course the oil is toxic, so then they cook it or they cure it with what's called hexane. Okay, hexane is a neurotoxin. So basically they take a toxic seed or toxic oil and they make it less toxic by treating it with a toxin. Makes sense, right? Then after that, it's cooled and washed in bleach. So they heat it up to a high degree which denatures it already, so it's already unstable, and then they cool it in bleach. So already not off to a great start. Okay, so when we take a look at canola oil a little bit further though, we look at the actual nutrient profile outside of the fact that it's toxic and the omega-6s are ridiculously high. 2,610 milligrams in a typical serving versus 1,200 milligrams of omega-3s. We want to have that be about one to one, not two to one like it is in this particular oil. Okay, now to add insult to injury, the omega-3s that are in it are already alpha-linoleic acid. Alpha linoleic acid technically is an omega-3, but it has to go through a fermentation process to ever be actually activated within the body, which only about one to 3% actually gets activated. So we're not getting barely any omega-3s out of this equation. Okay, you're not getting the phospholipid bilayer effect that you normally would get. Anyhow, I don't wanna spend a lot of time on canola oil. Let's move on to the next constituent, which is going to be soy. I talk about soy now and then, and I'm not completely anti-soy. I think a little bit is okay but the amount that's in Beyond Beef is a little over the top, and I get it, trying to feed the world, trying to make it a little bit of a cheaper way to feed the world without meat. Well, soy, of course, has the estrogen effect, okay? We've got that phytoestrogen, so we've got soy isoflavones, which are phytoestrogens, which means that they react with estrogen receptors within our body. So if you take a normal person and you give them soy, their body is going to react as if they just had a bunch of estrogen come into their body. Estrogen receptors become activated and this causes a whirlwind of water retention, potential breast tissue buildup, all kinds of things we don't want. But to make matters even worse, if you're a male, this is gonna downregulate your androgen receptors. So you have an increase in your estrogen activity and a decrease in your androgen and testosterone activity. This of course compounds itself because the higher estrogen goes, the lower testosterone goes. So you end up with this vicious circle of really plummeted testosterone levels and increased estrogen levels. But then when we talk about it a little bit further, we understand that soy is also goitrogenic. Now everyone bags on cruciferous vegetables because they're goitrogenic. Goitrogenic means it affects your thyroid. Okay, now cruciferous vegetables can affect your thyroid, but to such a small degree. But everyone's so focused when they talk about soy, about the estrogen effect, that they forget the fact that soy is extremely goitrogenic. So it affects your thyroid tremendously. And you wanna know what one of the leading causes of reductions of testosterone is in men? 
it's low thyroid function. So if we have a goitrogenic compound that's in soy that's affecting a thyroid and bringing the thyroid down, it's going to affect testosterone levels in men and it's generally just going to affect the metabolism in women. So not good stuff. Then we have to talk about the phytic acid. And I know I'm just laying it on you, all this bad stuff, bad stuff, bad stuff. You're like, when is he ever going to talk about the good side of Beyond Beef? Don't worry, I'll get there. Okay. So phytic acid is what is called inositol hexaphosphate. Hexaphosphate means six phosphate molecules. That means that it's highly charged. What does that mean? Okay, when something is highly charged, it means it has a lot of phosphate molecules and that it's going to react with different things in your body very easily, particularly minerals. It essentially is chelating them. By having a bunch of phosphate molecules, it's chelating iron, it's chelating magnesium, it's chelating zinc, it's chelating copper, and that means it's binding to it and just allowing it to leave the body. So here's something interesting. Animals consume seeds, and when they consume seeds, a lot of times they pass them out in their feces, right? Well, these phytic acid compounds make it so that the seeds have their natural storage of minerals because they chelate the minerals from the body. So basically, when an animal eats a seed, that seed, by default, steals minerals from the animal because of the chelating effect, and then it passes through the animal and plants and germinates because it already has the minerals that it needs because it stole it from the animal pretty wild. Nature is cool, but sometimes if we're consuming things like this all the time, it's messing us up. We need those minerals. So that's a big reason. Phytic acid is not always bad, but you don't want to be consuming a ton of it. I know I'm just kind of laying it on you here, but the next thing is probably the biggest issue when it comes down to Beyond Beef. And honestly, if Beyond Beef could have just gotten rid of this ingredient altogether, it would have been a little bit better. Probably would have been acceptable in a lot of people's books. And this is yeast extract. Now, yeast extract is sort of a fancy way of circumnavigating the word MSG. Now, it's not MSG, but it acts along the same lines within the body as MSG, monosodium glutamate. The thing is, is if Beyond Beef had to put MSG within their product, people would have taken one look at the ingredient list and run away because people don't like MSG, especially the vegan community who's generally health conscious and looking at Beyond Beef in the first place. So they use yeast extract, which is still a glutamate and glutamates affect the brain in a very negative way. You see, the reason that people usually put MSG in a product is to heighten the brain's sort of excitement level. It makes it so the brain gets excited, so foods that taste mediocre actually taste better because we're getting sort of a high. Our brain produces the neurotransmitter glutamate in small amounts already, okay? It's what allows us to feel a little bit of excitement, a little bit of anxiety that we need. But if we have too much, it overwhelms us, and we essentially borrow from tomorrow for today. And what happens then is we end up feeling drained, we end up feeling lethargic because these glutamates cross the blood-brain barrier. So, case in point is that when we look at Beyond Beef, it might not taste that good without the yeast extract. It's there to enhance the taste because it probably doesn't taste too good because it probably tastes like rancid canola oil. Okay. Now, what's going to happen when you consume a lot of glutamates is you're going to feel very foggy, but you're also going to do a lot of damage as far as inflammation goes, especially in the brain. So it's definitely not something you want to be consuming a lot of. In fact, it's probably something you want to ignore altogether. The next thing is some of the Beyond Beef products utilize synthetic forms of B12. This is a serious just cutaway to try to save some money. Instead of using methylcobalamin, which is a higher quality B12, they use a synthetic B12. They use cyanocobalamin. Now, when you look at a product that says cyanocobalamin, cyano means cyanide. So you're basically getting B12 that's derived from a toxin meaning it's hepatoxic. It's toxic to the liver to even consume that B12. So you're borrowing from Peter to pay Paul, essentially. You're like, you're taken from one area of your body to help another area of the body. It's just not the way to go. Come on, guys, use methylcobalamin. Spend a little bit more money and make a good product. Okay, enough bagging on Beyond Beef. Let's talk about the good side. The good side is the main protein source that they are using is pea protein. And studies have shown that pea protein has a similar amino acid profile to what we need to actually build muscle entirely. So if you're trying to build muscle, if you're trying to get adequate amounts of protein, then pea protein can get you there. In fact, I'm a big advocate for pea protein isolate and actually using pea protein instead of whey. So kudos to them for using this and not entirely soy. Okay, they wanted to round it out. They wanted to get a little bit better of an amino acid profile. So that's the good side here. We're getting one good quality protein in that if you were to eat Beyond Beef, just like maybe one meal I don't know, two meals per week maybe, it's not gonna hurt you, but it's definitely something that you wanna stay away from entirely for the long run. Now, of course, we have to look at the sustainability side because that's why a lot of people go for Beyond Beef. But we do have to remember that soy farms take up a ton of land, okay? A lot of the deforestation that's happened in Brazil over the last know, 10, 20 years has been to soy plantations, not for livestock farming. Now, 
you could argue that a lot of the soy plantations are essentially feeding livestock in other areas. So of course there's that argument, but soy takes up a lot of land, just like cows take up a lot of land. So it gets a little bit hard to take a look at this overall and see who's winning and who's being more ethical. Because at the end of the day, we're definitely just defacing the earth regardless one way or the other because we just have too many people. So we can't really complain about that. But what we can control is what's going in our bodies. So my official declaration on Beyond Beef is keep it to a minimum. If you're vegan, get your sources somewhere else because you're basically just getting pea protein and soy protein with some fancy flavoring and fancy oils to make it taste better. And of course the yeast extract to trick your brain into thinking that it's amazing. Okay, so as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. If you want me to do more reviews on specific kinds of trending foods, I'm happy to do that. Just post down in the comment section below what kind of foods you want me to take a look at. As always, keep it locked in. I'll see you in the next video.